Welcome to So Darn Fun, a place where we learn clothing alterations, I do pattern reviews, and other fun sewing how-tos. And today is a how-to day where we learn how to replace missing beading off of this dress. Don't go away! Now I'm getting ready to replace some of the beading on this dress. We're looking at this area right here where we've got some lines of some uh, diamonds that are missing here. Um, Helga was very happy to model the dress today while we replace the beading while it's being worn and it's just easier for me to do it this way. So of course Helga signed a waiver in case I poke her. Far be it for me to do that. I guess I have been known to pin into my dress form, but if that's not going to happen today as we replace this beading. Here's my hand behind that sheer layer. There is a lining back there, so I need to be careful I don't catch the lining, but I'm going to show a couple methods that I can use to uh, replace some of this. First of all, I have a needle and just a single piece of thread with a knot in the end. The most important thing right now is you need to have a very, very fine needle if your beads are tiny. Just make sure that with the beads you're going to work with that your needle will go through because sometimes that eye gets stuck and then you can end up breaking those beads. So what I'm going to focus on at this moment is this piece right here that's missing. So I've got the knot in my thread and because I'm not going to work from behind only because this dress has so many beads on it, a little teeny tiny knot laying on, on the front between beads really isn't going to show. Um, I'm going to take a little stitch from the top right by this bead right here. And being that this mesh is porous, it might even, the, might, the knot might even pull through to the back. Then I'm going to take one more little tiny stitch just to kind of make sure that that knot isn't going to pull out. And it looks like I can just go straight from here to here. So this is the first of two methods I'm going to show you. First of all, these little are like little teeny tiny tube beads. I think that's what they're called, but they're like short ones. And I can see from this side here that there's a sequin smack dab in the middle of these beads. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do three little tube beads at a time. So let me, let me load three beads on here. I've got my three beads loaded on here. Just going to pull them all the way down to the fabric. Reaching from behind, I'm going to lay those along the path I want them to go. And I'm going to stitch down into the fabric right where that last bead should go. And then I'm going to take a stitch up back behind where that bead will be. And I'll tell you why, because I'm going to now come back through that bead. The reason I do this is because it tends to make the rows straighter when I add the next row. So there's the three. Now I think what I need is another tube, so I'm looking at this side here, another tube, a sequence, and then another tube. So let me load those up. That'll work. Okay, Dan, put the needle down here. I'm going to come up, not just behind the sequence, but behind that other bead behind the sequence and then come back through that bead and the sequence at the same time. Not only does it help make the lines straight, but it kind of helps um, uh, make them solid in the fabric in case a thread should pop. I think that it makes it just a little bit more secure. And it looks like I can just do a, just beads to the end and probably maybe three beads. So let me grab three beads and see if that finishes off that edge. If so, then we are done with that particular shape. Okay, here's my three beads. Yep, takes it close enough there. So I'm gonna just take a stitch. A stitch back and I'm gonna go ahead and feed it through that last bead. And I'm going to feed it through the bead that's already on the dress just to kind of solidify everything together. And I'm going to take a stitch, see, this way along the bead that's already there. 
just for continuity and to kind of solidify. Well, solidify is probably not the right word. Make it secure. If any thread should pop, it just holds everything together. So I'm going to tie a knot here. There's my knot. And I'm going to pop it to the back. I'm just going to put my needle in. Now watch. I'm going to pull it, my needle up. But yet, when I clip it, because I'm pulling it tight and taut, that little thread here we go. Actually falls on the inside. There, that's done. That looks pretty good. Let's move on to the next one. Here's method two. And for method two, I'm going to do just this short portion of this one right here where you can see that there's missing beads there. So again, I'm going to take a stitch right next to the bead that I'm going to start by. Yeah, my knot is on top. I'm going to take one more stitch. And I'll just go ahead and start. I could actually take another stitch and go behind this bead. Yeah, let's do that just to show you. Go behind the bead, bring your needle through the bead. That way the connection between the, this bead and the new bead I'm putting on will be will will just be more natural, I guess. This time, instead of just threading a few beads on here, I'm going to do however many beads that I need to get to this point here. So I'm gonna do that in one long piece. Okay, so I have got four beads on my thread. These might be called bugle beads instead of two beads, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'll look it up afterwards and then I'll put text over to see so that you know what it is. All right, so I'm laying these across here and that just about meets that bead, good enough for me. I'm gonna put my needle through this bead and there's glue on this bead because remember I went through, <laughs> I went through all this with that glue. Um, if you saw the last video, I used a special cement glue in order to uh, glue down all these ends to these strings so that nothing pops off. I'm gonna also take my needle through probably that sequence and that next bead, just for continuity. There, now I'm up. My thread is twisting, so I'm gonna twist my needle back. Get rid of that twist. All right, so I'm gonna take a stitch down by that bead I just came up, and then I'm gonna come back up, way back here, right between a couple of those beads I just laid down, because remember we we lay these beads down in just one long string, but it kind of, it's loose, it loops up. So what we're gonna do is we are going to plaster them down by taking stitches over the string between the beads. So I have come up on that side of this row of beads, and now I'm bringing my thread over between two of the beads and taking a stitch right back down. And coming back up, I could skip a couple beads, but I'm just going to come back up right beside the neck between the next two, just to, so I can demonstrate. Putting the thread between those two beads and taking a stitch right down in the center where where the string is, and then doing it then to the last one. So basically, I have laid down one long string of beads, and I have come back and taken stitches over the top of the thread that all the beads are strung on. Therefore, now they are all actually plastered down really nicely. And I've come back up where I started. I'll take a stitch and tie my knot. Feed my needle back through the back. Now I could just pull it through to the back like this if I wanted to, and I'll do it just this time, but this dress is so heavy and I'm afraid I'm just gonna get, maybe pop more beads loose or lose track of where my thread's at. It's just easier for me to clip it from the front. I'll clip it from the back there. There, we have now just fixed this one. And I think this one. 
I have one, two more to fix. But now that you know how to do it, you could come over and do it for me. <laughs> need to do is this to here. So I'm going to put on a couple beads. There's the sequence. Yeah, that looks like enough to finish that angle. I'm just going to go ahead and feed it through the next couple beads that are already there. do method number two and then kind of stitch over the top between these beads over the top of that thread I hope this is showing clearly what I'm what I'm trying to demonstrate if it's not man please ask me let's put the comments and tell me that this wasn't clear at all um, sometimes my brain just kind of knows what it's trying to say and assumes that it's clear but if it's not just let me know okay so at this corner i'm going to come up to this corner and this is this is where i'm going to tie my knot right at that corner i just catch a loop pull it through like that and then pull the needle through one time making sure that that last loop stays close to the fabric there we go all done poke it through the fabric come up here just so that you can clip it pull it tight clip it close to the fabric and then the end of that thread is on the inside there i think my bride's going to be happy all those are going to be fixed. This is my next one. Now these little individual beads should be easy. They're just various ones individually missing just single beads. I don't know if I'll replace all of them, but I'll just choose a few uh, spots that I think that they're needed. And this is one of them right here. And there's one of those loops. So I'm just going to right by that loop. I've got a knot in my thread. I'm just going to take a little stitch right there. My knot is on top. One more stitch to just kind of hold it. And if there's um, like a tail from my knot sticking up a little bit, I'm just going to trim that off. Okay. So these are those kind of clear larger beads. So let me grab one of those from my little container. I have a container here that I saved beads that I took off of the straps and other beads that have fallen off of this dress. Just gonna slide the bead on my thread. And I'm just gonna take a stitch. I'm just gonna go through that loop and kinda paste that loop down so I don't have to cut it off. It's going inside that loop so if there's no way you can pull out and then uh, there's my bead. And then I'm just going to stitch down into the fabric and make a long string to where I want to come up next. Looks like there used to be a bead right next to this other one. Make sure your thread is long enough and that you don't pull. You want to gather the fabric up. You don't want the thread to be taut. You just want it to lay just as the fabric is going. Coming up through that loop there. Okay. Oh there. Let's get one bead. And then my thread's getting short, so this is probably the last bead that I'm going to do with this piece of thread. Then I will cut it and just make a new thread. There's my bead. 
Now for my knot, right close to the base of that bead, I'm going to tie a knot, pop it through, and snip. <laughs> you got the idea. That's all I know. Now you can do it. I'm glad you joined me today on this episode of So Darn Fun, where we replaced some of the beading on this dress. And yeah, I did just say episode because, yep, you can probably do it. And guess what, Helga? We didn't even need this waiver. If you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up, do a subscribe, hit that bell so that you can receive notifications of future videos. And thank you for joining me. Mm -hmm.